Hi guys, Rana here and in this time I'm gonna show you how can you track your videos and how can you add a real 3D object into your live action footage. So before we get into it, let's take a look at what you're gonna learn. Okay guys, now in this time I'm gonna using two software, Cinema 4D and After Effects CC 2015. The reason I'm using After Effects CC because the tracking feature we're gonna using in this particular video, uh, the Cinware, uh, which is only available in After Effects CC 2015. If you have a version uh, CS5 or CS6, it may not be there. So make sure you have a version. CC. So let's get started. Now, first of all, I would like to let you know is that uh, you have a footage with 24 frame rate per second. The reason is that when you send your tracking information into Cinema 4D, uh, the Cinema 4D is only accept the 24 frame rate per second. So make sure you have a 24 frame rate per second. So in this uh, video, I shot with my smartphone uh, having a 30 frame per second, uh, 29 as you can see here. Uh, so I have to change it. So first uh, we have to change it. Go to interpret and main and uh, change it to 24 and click OK. So now drag your footage into the new comp button. So now we have to track our footage. Right click on this footage, go to track camera. So I'll be back. Okay guys, now our footage is tracked. So next thing we need to do is set orientation, our scene and lock our scene. To do that, uh, let me go through these points and find some uh, cool points and good points uh, where are related to the, our ground surface so uh, let me scrub through the footage and find some good points or you can come over here and increase your track point size or target size uh, which helps you to find track points let me find some interesting points as you can see uh, these three points uh, align perfectly with my ground surface so I'm gonna uh, click here as you can see now three track points uh, connected and next thing we need to do is right click in here and go to set ground plane and origin so what it does uh, it set orientation are seen so now I'm gonna right click again and create three null and camera again I'm gonna right click and create solid solid just for reference we're gonna delete that later so it's time to send tracking information to Cinema 4D. So before we send tracking information to Cinema 4D, uh, we will need in Cinema 4D uh, JPG sequence of this same footage. So I'm gonna uh, uh, add to render queue this same footage. So I'm gonna select the format to JPG sequence. I'm gonna click OK. Now uh, you can save it whatever you want. I already saved so I'm not gonna save this again so let's uh, send the information to Cinema 4D to do that go to file export uh, max on Cinema 4D exporter uh, I'm gonna put this in desktop I'm gonna name this to tutorial real okay so Let's jump into our Cinema 4D. Okay guys, now we have a, a Cinema 4D file that we recently exported. Now I'm gonna open that in Cinema 4D. I'm gonna drag and drop into Cinema 4D. It will launch it. So now we are in Cinema 4D. You can see we have a three a track now and uh, solid and uh, when we open the folder we will see 3d track camera and 3 track now and solid 
so actually what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna delete that solid because we don't really need that so let's create a background so for background we need a texture so I'm gonna create uh, a material so I'm uh, right in this area I'm gonna double click and double click on this material and color channel and click in this arrow and click load image so in this area we have to locate our JPJ sequence so I'm gonna very first frame click and open it click no now here we see this this image I'm gonna click there now go to animation tab now very bottom click in this calculate button now what it does it calculates all of the all of frames of these videos so uh, if you might notice that we were working uh, in After Effect uh, 24 frame rate per second and Cinema 4D only accept 24 frame rate per second as you can see right there okay that pretty good so I'm gonna close this off now let's assign this material to background uh, okay as you can see here we have a texture in our background so next thing we need to do is create a plane click ok let's scale this up select the scale tool so to scale this up click hold and drag select plane scale this up very high ok I'm gonna assign that material as well into our plane so material selected and go to down here go to projection change this UVW mapping to Inferno so next thing we need to do is let's take a look at as you can see we have a darken area over there we have to fix this so I'm gonna right click in this plane cinema 4d tags and compositing so in here in the tags uh, we have to uncheck self shading and check a compositing backup so what it does this uh, uh, this thing is uh, invisible uh, the plane but it's still in our scene it will casting a shadow so it's help us to lot to work with like the scenes okay so now we can uh, import our models or you can create your own so uh, in this case I'm gonna import here a 3d car model which is uh, the link will be in the description you can download and uh, import that model in cinema 4d uh, I'm gonna uh, go import that model so let's go to our content browser and locate that file okay here I put that car I'm gonna double click that car and go back there and scale this up as well okay we are pretty close let's rotate it let's move it select the move tool to move it make sure the car selected okay let's take a look at I think this is pretty good so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna make a child this car to this now uh, as you can see here the down arrow uh, now the car uh, is uh, parented to this null or other word this car is a child of this 3d uh, 3d null or track now so let's create a light move this up uh, let's go to the top view you can zoom in and out your scroll, mouse scroll select the light move it right there and, uh, and click in this button to go through the viewers push it right there now select the light go to general and uh, decrease the density about uh, 95 maybe and uh, change the color of your light maybe you should pick one from the sky color 
okay now go to shadow and shadow change the type of shadow shadow maps soft and, uh, and decrease the density of your light it depends on your scene uh, how it's dark in here should be uh, lower so in my case it should be about uh, 38 so this is okay so if we check to render it okay now we have a car with a drop uh, casting a shadow and uh, go the next thing we need to do is uh, add ambient inclusion so I'm gonna go in, I'm going to add an ambient inclusion so in, in this render setting go to effects add ambient inclusion and contrast uh, should be 35 and max maximum ray length should be 500 okay let's see okay uh, but actually you can play around with this lighting uh, so uh, next thing we need to do is uh, save the file if you're happy with this so you can save the file and go back to After Effects and import your Cinema 4D file uh, which is already in desktop import it I'm gonna turn off the sound of this and turn off the solid now drag and drop uh, top of everything so here we have to change the render setting render to software to uh, standard final okay guys now we can do here is color correction I'm gonna uh, create a adjustment layer let's rename this CC to color correction let's uh, add a curves in there make it contrast uh, then go to red channel punch up a little bit and go to green channel it should be a little bit maybe right about there and go to blue channel and down a little bit and grab the wrong points go to blue channel again and down about right there maybe pretty good and uh, next thing we need to do is uh, uh, we have to add vignette top of everything simple way to do that I'm gonna create a, a, another curves, curves and darken it a bit and uh, I'm select a lips tool I'm gonna select a lips tool and I'm gonna double click on this and going to I'm going to effects and this curves second curves we added another time so in compositing options we have to click in this plus sign and go back here our mask and invert it or we can feather this okay like this or here we can add a little bit of fast blur uh, go to blur and sharpen where it is okay add fast blur add maybe one fast blur 
I think we should delete that. And finally, we have something look like this. Alright, that's the end of this tutorial. Please subscribe to my Runners VFX YouTube channel where you find some of my VFX short motion graphic video tutorials, news about upcoming tutorials. So see you in the next time.